So today, I'm going to try and make some improvements to my dust collection. I'm going to try and turn this into this. And we'll see if it works. Stay tuned. Hi guys, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs and I know it's been a while. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Kat fell out, of the, you know, fell out of the garden, coming out of the garden and she slipped and broke her foot back in May of last year and as a result, we found out that the reason she slipped was because her right knee gave out on her. So they wound up having to replace it. Yes, I know, she seems a little young to have to have the total knee replacement, but she has actually been ha looking at the possibility of having a total knee replacement since she was about 20. Um, she's lived a very hard life and it finally called up to her. Um, so yes, yeah, she wound up having to have her right knee replaced. And just when she was starting to get back to normal with her right knee her left knee completely blew out and she had to have it replaced she's now about four weeks out of that surgery and starting to get around on a cane instead of a walker um, she's starting to go back up steps upstairs and everything's not falling on me to take care of around the house anymore not to mention the fact that Colorado has been weird with its winter this year. Um, we've still got snow on the ground and we've got more coming in tonight and that's the way it's been all winter. And it seems like every day that I think I can get out and start working in the shop, it, it, it snows or it rains or it gets too cold or whatever. I mean, I've got the heater and I've got these and I, I've got a, a plan to be able to fix this a little bit better so that on colder days I'll be able to work a little better than I can right now or on days when it's snowing I'll, I'll be able to work because right now when it's snowing I pretty much can't work if it's snowing hard enough but yeah I've got a plan for that and that'll be in an upcoming video when once I get it all figured out and, and maybe I'll actually do it um, yeah I mean th there's just been a lot going on and now I'm hopefully I'm back um, with any luck, this will be the first of quite a few videos coming. I can't guarantee it's going to be every week. I can't guarantee it's going to be every other week. But I, I am currently working on a rather large project. And when I say large this time, I mean large as in it's large. <laughs> and that'll all make sense when that video comes out. But the project I'm working on has actually made me realize that my dust collection is just inadequate, especially for my planer and my joiner. Um, I'm, the, I'm working with cedar on this one, western red cedar, and I have to plane the boards down um, before I even work with them. Uh, I don't join them because they're so long and my joiner's small, and I'm just using as straight boards as I can, and I'm planing them down, one, one, to smooth them out, and two, to get them with the right thickness. And I run three boards through my planer, and my little dust collector here is full and it started actually feeding back into my shop vac because it gets full and I'm just not stopping soon enough to empty it out and for that have that not happen so as you can see this is what I've been using I have a dust deputy cyclone from Oneida Air Systems I've had this for a little over a year I think maybe closer to two I don't really remember but um, it's it, it, it works it works great <laughs> I really can't say much else about it, but yeah, it, it's just small. And for what I'm, the stuff I'm getting into now, and I, I, I have to empty it two or three times a day, and that's it, it slows me down in my work process. So I decided to go and get this. This is a 55 gallon drum. Now, this one is food grade, it doesn't have to be food grade for this particular project. Um, as a matter of fact, Oneida makes a 55 gallon drum that's already got the hole cut out and everything to accept the cyclone. So what I'm going to do, I've got, make, I've got one that is airtight and it also has holes in it to 
vent or whatever you need to do to look in it, whatever, you know. Um, but I need to cut a hole in the top, get that put onto it, and we'll see how it works. Um, I have heard of other people doing this. Like I said, Oneida makes one that a 55 gallon drum for the cyclone, but it's rather expensive. Um, I sourced this locally. There, there won't be a link for this in the description like I normally do because I actually sourced this locally because it was actually cheaper locally. I, th I think I spent about 50 bucks on this at a local farm store, ranch store. Um, for those of you that have these in your area, it was Big R. They had this drum for 55 gallon drum for 55 bucks. And the reason I went with plastic instead of metal, because I know a lot of people have used metal in these, in this, um, is number one, it's lighter, the weight. Uh, number two, actually, that's pretty much it. It was also, it's cheaper. Yeah, it costs less. Um, th those are pretty much the only two reasons. I mean, weight was the biggest reason, because I I can only have my dust collector over here near my bench, and my trash in my garden. If I put the shavings out in the garden it's quite a distance I'm, I am gonna put these on this on wheels I'm not gonna do that in this video but I am gonna put this on wheels make a little base for it to sit on that'll make it a little easier to move around uh, but it's definitely gonna be easier to empty when it comes when it gets full so that's what we're doing today and yeah so let's get started okay so yeah the first thing I need to do is I need to take the cyclone off of the existing lid for the five gallon bucket and it's fairly simple to do you just need a two wrenches or a ratchet and a wrench or just something to be able to undo the bolts you take all the bolts out and pull the gasket off and that's that Okay, so the next thing you need to do before you just go start cutting a hole willy-nilly in the new lid is you need to find the center of it. And there's a, quite a few different methods out there to be able to find the center of a circle, but this is by far my favorite. And what I'm doing is I'm just marking a, let's say a 10 inch line, I think it was, I don't remember exactly. And that's called a chord. And then once I make that line, then I find the, cent I find the center of that line, which would be five, if it's a 10 inch line and I mark that and I repeat that two more times on different sides or edges of the circle so now once I have all three chords then I'm gonna line my square up the corner of the square on the halfway mark and I'm gonna line the bottom of the square with the line with the chord and then I'm going to draw a line on the other leg of the square and where those three lines meet will be the center and as you can see it's not it doesn't have to come out exactly perfect there's going to be a little triangle in the center and that's the dead center of my lid now this doesn't have to be a hundred percent dead center but the closer you get the better So the very next step is to find out exactly how big my opening needs to be and it turns out to be about three inches but you don't want to take that measurement and then take it to the new lid you actually need to to cut that in half because what you're doing is you're taking three inches you want a three inch circle but you're marking from the center to the edge so basically you're marking the radius and then marking the center from there and so you need to cut that in half so as you can see, I'm going to take it from 2.9995 and I'm going to get it close to 1.5. And then once I have that set, I'm going to lock it down so it doesn't slip on me. With this particular set of calipers, I have they have sharp points on them and they, it digs into the plastic very well so I just use it to mark my hole mark where I'm gonna cut my hole out at 
I put the one end on the center and then I just use the other part as a compass to mark the circle. And then once I have it marked, I'm just going to bring over the other lid and line it up just to double check and make sure I've got the right size hole marked. Now the next step is obviously to cut out the hole. So I'm using a, a knife that I got for some plastic panels that we put on our greenhouse. Um, it's used to cut them out. You can use a utility knife or pocket knife or anything that's sharp. But the sharper the better on this, but this does a really great job. You can pick it up at Home Depot in the, with the plastic panels, which is usually back in the window section. Um, and it was fairly cheap if I remember right. It, it does the job very well. And then once you have it cut through, you just pop the centerpiece out. And before I move forward, I just took a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and smoothed it out, got rid of some of the burrs, and just, yeah, smoothed it out. That's the simplest way to put it. The simplest method I came up with to put the screw hole, the bolt holes in, is to use the old lid as a template so I'm just lining up the two center holes and I'm gonna use some masking tape and tape it down I'm gonna drill the holes one at a time and put a bolt in each hole as I drill it and that'll hold the hold it in place and that'll line up my holes perfectly and then of course the next step is to put the cyclone on so I put the gasket on and then I put the cyclone on top and I ran two bolts through and holding it in place while I put the nuts on the bottom of these bolts and I'm just doing them hand tight at the moment and I'll get all seven bolts, six bolts, sorry, miscounted, all six bolts in place and then I'll tighten them all down. Now I just have to put the lid on the barrel and lock it down. And of course the next step is to try it out. So I got all my hoses hooked up and it definitely has some suction to it. I know some of you are gonna say that that's probably not good, but if you have the five gallon version and you look at it closely, it actually does the same thing. It's just, this is bigger, so it's easier to see. I don't have a whole lot to vacuum up right now, but I do have a little bit laying around on my table saw and stuff. So I'm gonna take it and vacuum that up and we'll see how it does. So the little bit that's left inside the shop vac is actually from where I cleaned it out before, from where it backed up on me. So, so far so good. Okay, hey, yeah, so that's it. I mean, it's fairly simple. It, it's, yeah, it's a simple, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. You just need to make sure that you have an airtight container and that you seal it up well enough and it should work just fine. It, the little bit that I've done so far with it, it seems to work just fine. Uh, if not better than the smaller one, actually. Um, I think it has a little bit more suction to it, so it should work better. Uh, also, um, I'm going to give it, use it for the next few weeks, and I'll put out an update on it to let you, know, you guys know how, how well it worked. And um, like I said, I've also got some other videos that I'm working on, and you know, this big project, and be sure to watch out for those videos. So. Yeah, until next time guys, happy creating.